guys, the Bench Buddies are back with the week three NFL power rankings. We have lots of movement here in this week's rankings. But before I get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Get us to 200 subscribers where I'll be doing that autographed item giveaway. Just to be entered, all you got to do is hit subscribe and we'll be picking one random subscriber. But let's get into it here at 32. We have the Falcon stand put. The comeback bid fell short. They were down 28 to 3. They tried to do the exorcism of the curse, but they couldn't do it. And it lives on for at least another week. Uh, but the bright side, they are looking better. Mariota looks better in this one. If he limits his INTs, he can get that down to one or even zero a game. Uh, this Falcons team could be winning a few games here and could be winning this one on the road in Seattle as well. They need to get Kyle Pitts involved more. Drake London has been obviously wide receiver one, but if you can get Pitts involved, this team will be much more dangerous. 31, we got the Panthers, another tough loss to the Giants. And, you know, right now the story is they're losing on game-winning field goals. This team could easily be 2-0. and Unfortunately, they're not. Baker, he's been struggling a little bit in his two games as a Panther, but he should get back on track against the Saints. I know it's a tough defense, but I think Baker can have a decent game. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win this game, but I think Baker can rebound from last week. 30, we got the Texans dropping a spot. And they were in this game until the fourth quarter until Russ not took over, but essentially led them down the field and got them a win. Uh, they got three field goals and they need touchdowns. Obviously, you know, you can't rely on field goals to win at all. But on the bright side, the Broncos only had two field goals in the red zone and the Texans held them. So the defense is looking better. This offense is looking a lot better than a lot of people expected. So don't expect this Texans team to, you know, do my preseason prediction of two wins. 29th, we got the Bears, and they're falling down a little bit here because they lost the Packers. They've now lost seven straight to the Packers. Uh, they couldn't stop the run game. Fields only threw it 11 times, but looked okay. And I just think David Montgomery is the only, you know, reliable person on this team on the offensive side of the ball right now. Until they can start getting others involved, this Bears team will be in a world hurt. 28, we got the Seahawks falling as well. And the thing that hurt them was the run game. They tried to run it. They got it banded from that early. And then he had to rely on Gino, who did okay, just didn't really do anything spectacular. Uh, but, you know, with Tyler Lockett and DK, they need to get involved more. Lockett did good this week. Metcalf was just a so-so performance. But they tried to get cute in the red zone. DJ Dallas threw a pick, not even close to DK. And that kind of stunted the comeback for the Seahawks, but you know, the, another week to prove themselves is they could be two and one here against the Falcons. Commanders dropping a little bit too after they took a road loss to the Lions. They're down 22 nothing at half, clawed their way back into it, but they just couldn't get it done as the Lions scored late to really seal this one away. Carson Wentz, though, is playing spectacular in the first two games. He's having a great season so far, and we'll see if he can keep it up this week against a tough Eagles defense. 26, we got the Jaguars. They're moving up. After the shutout of the Colts, they beat the Colts eight straight times in Jacksonville. They held Indianapolis to 0-2 in the red zone. And I think the big story here is Robinson and ETN are going to be a duo that I think not a lot of people saw coming. A lot of people thought it was going to be ETN was RB1 and Robinson maybe a few you know, touches here and there. But that's not the case. They're both getting their touches. Lawrence is playing great. Christian Kirk's looking good. And this Jaguars team could be making some noise here in the AFC South. 25, we got those Colts. And I just couldn't put them under the Jaguars just yet, just because of how high I had them ranked. Uh, but it, it might be time to panic if you lose this one to the Chiefs at home. 0-2-1. Oh, uh, I had, didn't score, obviously, against Jacksonville. Los, you know, lost a close one week one. But Matt Ryan, he needs to step up his play. You know, they brought him in for a good reason, getting rid of Wentz and bringing in Ryan. And right now, you'd rather have Wentz in this situation. But if Ryan can keep up with the Chiefs here, make, if Michael Pittman's available, I think this Colts team can rebound. But I don't know how big of a rebound. 24, we have the Titans falling a lot as well. They pretty much got slaughtered on TV and got outscored 34 nothing since it was a tie game at 7. And Derrick Henry... You know, he was just non-existent. 13 attempts, 25 yards and tutty. Tannehill struggled, as always, when the run game isn't going good. He struggles. And this defense, I mean, definitely not the same team looking like last year. I'm not overreacting yet. I think this Titans team can turn it around because, you know, they've got the Raiders, another 
0 2 team this year. And I think, you know, it's going to be a big game for both these teams early. You got the Jets moving up to 23, and they snapped a 13 game losing streak in September with the huge comeback against the Browns. And they were down 13 with a minute 55 to go. They pulled off the miracle, scored, got the onside kick, Flacco threw another tutty, and he finished with four touchdowns, 307 yards. And Flacco looked excellent in this performance. Let's see if he can repeat it against the Bengals. 22, we got the Detroit Lions. They start slow normally almost every year, but this year they're changing the course. Dan Campbell is really taking this team by storm. A lot of people are getting hard knocks right now. A lot of people are rooting for the Lions. And how can you not? I mean, this team has been struggling for however many years. And they got Hutchinson, the, sec the second pick in the draft, came in with three sacks, five tackles against the Commanders. Amra St. Brown, you know, just has gone off this year. 17 receptions, 180 yards, and three tutties. And Jared Goff, have a day. 256 yards, four touchdowns. This Lions team, you know, could give the Vikings a little bit of trouble here uh, if they can keep up their high-scoring ways. The Giants are moving up as well to 21 after their close victory to the Panthers. The first 2-0 start since 2016. First, you know, 2-0 start since the boat picture, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they have two game-winning field goals of 50 yards to start the year. Graham Gano has been money, but the big concern is Kenny Galladay. What are they going to do with him after paying him a big contract last year, barely played last year, only on the field for two snaps against the Panthers. And I expect a move to be made sooner rather than later. 20, we got the Steelers just falling one spot. Uh, I think, you know, the big question here is what happened to that defense? Obviously it was missing something without TJ Watt, but when they get him back, I think they'll be just okay. But Kenny Pickett, is he going to be the guy some point this year? That's going to be the big question. I think that stat is going to be up there pretty much the whole year. When's Pickett going to play if he plays? Because Trubisky, he didn't look great, but he didn't look, you know, bad. But I just think he, Pickett will take this team to another level. And, you know, Trubisky kind of keeps the team okay. 19 with the Patriots moving up as well after beating those Steelers. And I think this could be a building block for the Patriots. They have the Ravens at home this week, and that'll be a tough test after their loss last week to the Dolphins. But if Mac Jones can play well, throw it a little better, and get the run game in it more, I think this could be a better game than you might think. 18, we got the Raiders falling a lot here, and this is just on them. You know, they blew the 20-point lead, lost in overtime on the Renfro fumble, the scoop and score. Devontae, he only had two catches for 12 yards. But Derek Carr had a good performance, to say the less. But something's up there. Josh McDaniels, you know, needs to figure some things out quickly as they're going to face the Titans, who are also 0-2. 17, you got the Browns falling two spots. And I'm not going to overreact and put them any lower than 17 here. Just because they blew that 13-point 13, 13 lead because just mean this team is 2-0 and and could be possibly in the top 10. Um, but the only thing, you know, they struggled with is recovering that onside kick and the defense just faltered late. But Nick Chubb had a great day, three touchdowns. Jacoby Brissett played well until he threw the interception on the Browns' last offensive play of the game. And I think everything will be okay for the Browns. They got the Steelers Thursday night football tomorrow. Should be a good game, and I think it could go a long way on deciding how good this Browns team will be. 16, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. And this team obviously is in a Super Bowl slump right now. They've had five straight games decided by three points, dating back to the divisional round of last year. And they've been on the winning side three times. Obviously, this year they've lost twice. But the big thing for me is this offensive line is just the same as last year. Different names, same results. They gave up six sacks to Dallas. And I get Dallas has a good pass rush. But six sacks, come on. Burrow's still taking all these hits. I mean, obviously, you saw there. He, look, look at those stats, 24-26. He's doing his part. But if he doesn't have enough time, to get the ball out, and this team can't win games. 15, we got the Cardinals making a big jump as well with that overtime victory against the Raiders. And I like the comeback here. I think the Cardinals could be a sleeper team, a dark horse team, if you want to say, to possibly get a wild card bid, maybe even win that NFC West after, you know, everyone everyone right now in that division, I believe, is one and one. Uh, yeah, everyone's one and one in that division. So it's really up in the air after two weeks. I know it's week three we're heading into here, but not a lot of people are counting on the Cardinals to be that team uh, this year. But James Conner, he left it early with an ankle injury, but he should be able to go for week three. Kyler, obviously, you got to talk about his two-point conversion, extending the play by like 20 seconds, running, I think it was 87 yards on that two-point conversion, just going around in circles, circles weaving in and out. 
and rushing in for that two-point conversion to keep them in the game. And obviously it paid off. They got the win in overtime. 14, we got the Dallas Cowboys making a huge jump here because of Cooper Rush. He, you know, kept this team in the game. Obviously the offense sputtered in the second half until the last drive, but they won the game. They got out of there against a tough Bengals team. And I think you got to look at Zeke and Tony Pollard. They're looking pretty solid in the backfield. I know Zeke hasn't scored yet this year, but he can turn it on at any moment. He could break a big rush. And I love this combo here in Dallas. 13, we got the Saints falling. They finally lost to the Bucks with Tom with Tom Brady at the helm in a Bucks uniform. Uh, they, you know, did have a little scuff on the field. Mike Evans got suspended because of it. But the big problem here was no Camara. And, you know, they really were missing something on offense without him on the field. But I expect him to be able to play week three at the Panthers and to get back on track here. Uh, and, you know, Jameis, you know, has got to limit his INTs. And I think the Saints team will be just okay. Then the Broncos moving up a little bit here. And not much to say here. I mean, you, you want to nitpick, you can. They got flagged 13 times for 100 yards. 25 penalties on the year through two games is atrocious. But this offense is struggling. Wilson's still struggling, adjusting to the new system. Obviously, Javante Williams has been a dog. He's been really good for the Broncos. But other than that, there's been no really stellar performances from this Broncos team. 11, we got the Vikings falling back out of the top 10. They just didn't look like the same team they did in week one. And that's partial to blame of Kirk Cousins getting intercepted by Darius Slay. It felt like almost every other drive. Uh, but this Vikings team, nothing to overreact too early. They are a really good team, I believe. The Eagles are just that good as well this year. Obviously, you haven't seen them yet in our rankings. The Vikings, if they can get Justin Jefferson back on track next week against the Lions, I expect a big win there. 10, we got the Niners jumping back into or back into the top 10 as we're starting it out here. Obviously, the big story is Trey Lance out for the season with his ankle injury and fibula. Jimmy G is at the helm, and GM John Lynch looks like a genius keeping Jimmy G restructuring his contract. But now that Jimmy G is under center, this is going to be a more balanced attack team with Trey Lance, who's more a run combo, running run and gun. Uh, but now I think Jimmy G is the successor. Personally, if I were to bet right now, my hot take is that Jimmy G will be re-signed next year. Trey Lance will be traded out of the bay, and they'll ride Jimmy G until the sunset ends, until he retires. That's what I think with this Niners team, but things could change, obviously, if something goes bad this year. Nine, we got the Ravens falling four spots out of the top five, and this is just because they blew that 21-point lead, and they still put up 38, but it just wasn't enough to stop that Dolphins team last week with Tua going off. And Bateman and Andrews both went over 100 yards last week with a tutty. Lamar had an excellent game, of course, you know, one of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL right now. And he needs to get paid by Baltimore or else, you know, they're going to regret that for years to come. Eight, we have those Dolphins jumping into the top 10, obviously beating those Ravens. And Tua, have a day, almost 500 yards passing, six touchdowns, and he had two interceptions. But if he, you know, limits those INTs, gets those down, maybe won a game. Uh, this Dolphins team is looking very promising, a lot better than people anticipated. But now they're going against the Bills. Should be a Excellent matchup here, both 2-0, and and it should really decide on how these teams um, are going to fare for the rest of the year. Seven, we have the Rams staying put after that ugly win. I mean, they were up 28-3, to but it became ugly late. They almost blew it, but they didn't. The Rams, the INT late sealed it. Uh, Cam Akers had a bounce back game. Nothing too, you know, good looking on the stat sheet, but he had 17 total touches. Uh, combining for 62 yards. So that's something to monitor. But Stafford, you know, he's been playing just okay. And wait till he, you know, limits his turnovers. Uh, this Rams team will get dangerous like they were last year. Six, we got the Packers making a big jump back into the top 10. Uh, mostly in part just because after the first quarter, they were dominating the Bears. They limited them to, I think, I think it was 24 to three uh, since the second quarter started. And the run game obviously took off with Aaron Jones going off and A.J. Dillon getting his touches. Rodgers, he said on the Pat McAfee show that they want both of these guys to get 15 touches a game. And if this is the case, you know, Rodgers is still going to put up some decent numbers. Probably not back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back MVP numbers, but, you know, you got to adjust with your team. Uh, the receiver is still a big question mark, but Rodgers looks, you know, in more in tune with receivers this week than he did in week one. And the run game obviously looks like a top run game in the league. Starting the top five, we have the Chargers falling down two spots. Herbert had an excellent game, uh, you know, obviously with his 
fractured rib cartilage. He should be able to go against Jacksonville this week. Nothing really I've seen. Uh, but his pick six, he threw the drive before he got hurt. Pretty much sealed this game. Uh, you know, it was 20, I think it was 27 or it was 24 to 17 after that happened. And, so, you know, you just kind of feel all the momentum swing. I think it was like an 80% chance for Chargers to win. And then the Chiefs pick six made it like a 75% chance for the Chiefs to win. So a big swing there. Uh, but I expect the Chargers to rebound this week against Jacksonville. Number four, we got the Eagles jumping into the top 10 with the big win on Monday night against the Vikings. The NFC looks like it is almost theirs to lose. And I love this Eagles team. The defense is excellent this year. Jalen Hurts is playing exceptional. Obviously, over 300 yards passing, a touchdown, 57 rushing yards, and two touchdowns on the ground. And when he, you know, is going to do that, this Eagles team is going to be very tough to stop. Moving up a spot, we have the Bucks, and they escaped in New Orleans, but at what cost? Mike Evans got suspended one game for the altercation on the field. Uh, but, you know, the big story, obviously, there besides that is Brady's slow play this year. Nothing, you know, to write home about coming out of retirement. Maybe he's still getting that rust off. I mean, the man is 45 years old here. Come on. And if he can elevate it this week against the Packers, they have a good defense as well. But if he can, you know, get over, you know, 250 and two touchdowns, I think everything will be okay in Tampa. Number two, we have the Chiefs staying put with the close victory over the Chargers. Mahomes had a game manageable game. Uh, Jalen Watson with the pick six that was mentioned earlier, you know, that shifted all momentum and pretty much made the Chiefs win that game. Uh, but I think the story for the Chiefs is now that they don't have Hill and the Kelsey combo, uh, it's going to be, you know, kind of a crapshoot for uh, receptions besides Kelsey. Nine different players caught a pass. They have lots of weapons in this system. And that just makes the Chiefs, I think, more versatile in this team. And at one, of course, we have the Buffalo Bills for their second straight week. Derek Henry, they limited him to 25 yards on 13 attempts and a touchdown. I mean, Josh Allen is going off, you know, four touchdowns in this performance, four in the last. So he's had eight total touchdowns this year. Stephon Diggs have a day, three reception or three receiving touchdowns. Diggs is on fire as well. And this Bills team, I'm very curious how they're going to play in Miami. I think it could be another high scoring game for the Bills and the Dolphins. And I'm most anticipated to watch that game uh, in week three. But that's going to be it for the video today. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Get to 200 subscribers to be entered into our giveaway. But until the next week's power rankings, the Bench Buddies are out.